Hey everyone, my name is Eric Thor and this is People Plus and in this video I'm going to address this stupid stereotype that claims that some people are feelers and that some people are thinkers and the stupid thing about this stereotype is that it's just another example of stereotypes based on men and women. It's said that women make decisions based on feelings and that men make decisions based on logic. Anyone who does basic psychology knows that there is no such thing as a person not driven by feelings. The truth is, if you didn't have feelings, you would have no incentive to get up in the morning. The reason for this is that you want chemical rewards. You are driven to experience dopamine, oxytocin, and all those various chemicals out there that make you feel good and you're driven to experience emotions and so if you at the end of this video still say that you are a thinker and that you value logic more than women do sorry more than feelers do then you sir are an idiot in neuroscience there is this amazing network it's called the default mode network and there's another anti-correlated network, it's called the task positive network and the amazing thing about these two networks is that one of them is experience oriented and one of them is task oriented. The task positive network you use it whenever you are thinking about doing a task, thinking about recording a video, thinking about uh, pushing a button, thinking about following an instruction Whenever you're following orders or instructions, you're using the task positive network consciously. Whenever you are experiencing and focusing on experiences, you are using the default mode network. So possibly, maybe this is what feelers or thinkers are all about. Maybe this is what people are trying to explain. But if they are, there is no correlation between being male and female in using these networks. But there are no statistics and saying that you are a moral person or that you are a person who values feeling is more a result of culture than of genetics. There are some great things about the default mode network. You use it whenever you're thinking about relativity, that the fact that what is true to you might not be true to other people. And what's great about the task positive network is that you use it whenever you try to think in objective terms. Whenever you're trying to formalize rules and laws. The default mode network is what you use to set normative rules. The default mode network is what you use to think about what other people are experiencing. And how you can behave to influence them properly. The default mode network can be used in various strategy games. Especially when there's element of randomness. Because you can use it to study another person's play preference and you can use that to counter their strategies. And that's completely logical. That has nothing to do with being a thinker. Being experience oriented, you will generally say that you do something because you want recreation, because you want to have fun, because you want to meet people, because you want to travel. You focus on the experience, on the reward itself where the task positive person focuses on the task, the work, the project. The task positive person says that they are oriented, driven to, driven by challenges, driven by problems and solving problems, learning new languages and completing different tasks that you have to do throughout the day, cleaning the house or fixing various things. The default mode, mo the default mode network is more motivated by experiences, so negative experiences trigger negative tasks. They make them behave badly in return. And the negative experience is supposed to motivate other people to change their behavior and to... And so everything the default mode network inspires you to do is a result of motivation. And this causes the default mode network to have a different communication style than the task positive network does. The default mode network will communicate by behaving in different ways, behaving badly, behaving positively, to show other people 
to influence other people in different ways. Where the task positive network will focus on achievements, on actions that directly control the flow of the group. Orders, instructions, manuals, anything that literally explains how you should behave and how you should act goes through the task positive network. Now, thinking and feeling, that might actually also be a part of something else. It may be a way to explain the difference between being self-reflective and being affective. Because affective personality types, they are really acting rashly, instinctively. They, make, they have reflex-based behavior. They, make, they have impulses that influence how they act towards other people. While the self-reflective network is more internally motivated, it's, it's more restrained. It holds back words decisions and behaviors for as long as possible so that you can think things through. And that means you can think about the default mode network. You can self-reflect on it and it can appear extremely logical, causing a lot of people to say that they are introverted thinkers or extroverted feelers. But using the words thinking and feeling to explain your processes might actually not be that smart. At least, according to neuroscience, it's so much more complex. What you're also missing is the fact that when you use one network consciously, the other network goes unconscious and becomes the person's blind spot. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, leave a like, a comment, something to let me know that you enjoyed or hated this video. Thank you for watching.